Well, with the right settings, your Canon M50 footage can look like this. Let's start with the menu display. The Canon M50 is a great beginner mirrorless camera. Right out of the box, you get a very easy to navigate menu. But this is also holding you back for more advanced settings. So let's change it. Go to the last section, menu display, change to standard. Now you see the grown up version of the menu display that is common in higher end Canon cameras. Okay, I know this can seem quite overwhelming with so many new sections and buttons, but don't freak out. You'll get used to it with enough practice. And also by watching this video over and over again. Relying on the auto settings is not a good idea since the results can be inconsistent. If you want better video quality, you'll need more control over the shutter speed and aperture. To do that, toggle video mode, choose mode, manual. Now I'll get back to the shutter speed and aperture settings a bit later. First, we need to make sure that the other settings are set to manual. Next, picture style influences the overall look of your footage. To get there, head over to the menu, camera, tab three, picture style. Within each picture style, you can set the sharpness contrast, saturation, and color tone. So it's up to you to choose which picture style suits you as long as it's not set to auto. I prefer to leave mine on standard because I don't do any color grading or color correction. I'm relying on the Canon M50's amazing color science right out of the gate. However, if you do plan to do some color corrections and color grading, it's best to install some custom picture style either CineStyle or ProLost, I'll leave a link to another video that walks you through that process. Another setting you need to change is white balance. White balance determines how the camera perceives the color temperature. The lower the value, the warmer or more orangey your video will be. The higher values will produce a much cooler or bluish look. So in the menu, go to camera, tab three, white balance. There's a bunch of presets here. In most cases, it's best to keep to daylight, which is 5200 Kelvin. You can also manually set the values to be more precise. Now, I've said it before, whatever it is, don't leave it on auto because this will cause inconsistencies in your footage. Moving on, you need to ensure you're using the right video resolution and frame rate. To make the changes, go to menu, camera, tab one, movie recording quality. Video resolution is referring to the size of the video image. And this is not to be confused with the video file size, although usually it does correlate. If you're doing talking hit videos and YouTube content like this, you don't need to go with 4K. Full HD is more than enough. And by the way, the Canon M50 is not the best at producing 4K as there is some limitations. The footage will be cropped and you can't use autofocus. Now, frame rates on the other hand, determine how smooth your footage will be. The higher the frame rate, the smoother motion will appear. My preference is 30 frames per second. I feel this is good for talking hit videos and YouTube education videos. If you want a more cinematic look, feel free to use 24 frames per second. For those of you in PAL region, you will see an option for 25 frames per second instead. This lower frame rate will slow things down a bit to make things feel more dramatic. Again, this is a matter of preference, so experiment and make your own decision later on. One important thing to note, you need to make sure that your project settings in the video editor is using the same frame rate. If not, there'll be some inconsistency with the motion in the final video, just letting you know. Now, speaking of motion, another setting that influences motion is shutter speed. The lower the shutter speed, the more motion blur is introduced. If you set your shutter speed higher, there'll be less motion blur. To change your shutter speed, tap on this button right here. By the way, if you don't see anything on your screen, press the info button a few times. It'll pop up eventually. The general rule for video is doubling the shutter speed based on your frame rate. For example, if your video is set to 30 frames per second, the shutter speed should be one of 60. If you're using 24 frames per second, the closest value is 1 50th since digital cameras just don't set specific value of 1 over 48. Although I say this is a rule, but it doesn't mean you can't use other values. It's just that most people agree that this has the right amount of motion blur to make the footage feel natural. You ever notice some videos have that blurry background? The technical term for that is bokeh or bokeh and nobody actually know how to pronounce it. Anyway, there's a few things that influence this and one of them is aperture. The bigger the aperture, the more shallow the depth of field which leads to more background blur. The confusing thing is that on your camera, the lower the number, the bigger the aperture is instead of smaller. You can change your aperture settings by pressing this button right here. The values that you see will differ based on the type of lens that you're using. For example, I'm using the Sigma 16mm 1.4. 
and the lowest aperture value is, well, 1.4. This in turn will influence the price of the lens. So in most cases, the more expensive lens are capable of capturing more light and they have bigger apertures. One of the main selling points of the Canon M50 is a dual pixel autofocus. In the menu, go to camera, tab 5, AF method. For talking hit videos, I prefer to just leave autofocus and eye tracking on since it's pretty reliable. I'll make a separate video to explain about the other autofocus modes and when you should use them. For talking head videos, stabilization shouldn't be a concern since you'll be placing the camera on your desk or using a tripod. However, if you're doing some vlog style shots or B-roll, you'll need to pay attention to this. In the menu, go to camera, tab 8, IS mode, and then enable. There's two types of stabilization, in-body stabilization and digital stabilization. In-body stabilization, or as the pros refer to IBIS, refers to hardware-based stabilization. There's a gyroscope inside the camera that detects the movement and then readjusts the sensor to reduce camera shake. Some lenses also have stabilization, which you can combine to reduce even more camera shake. Now, here's some bad news. The Canon M50 only has digital stabilization, which isn't as good. And on top of that, it will cause some cropping as it compensates by moving the image around. But my suggestion is that you try it out first and compare to see whether this bothers you or not. You won't know until you try. Okay, now for some bonus settings. Woohoo! This will help improve your experience when shooting video with the Canon M50. Now, when you look on top, there's actually a tiny record button for video, but sometimes that can be quite annoying to press. I recommend that you reprogram the shutter button to start or stop recording instead. So go to the menu, camera, tab 8, shutter button function for movies, full press, start, stop recording. And now you can use the shutter button to start and stop recording. <clears throat> Another annoying thing is by default, the Canon M50 automatically switches between viewfinder and touchscreen. So the logic is that it will detect your face as you get closer to the viewfinder and it will switch off the touchscreen. The problem is that sometimes if your hand or your fingers get too close, it will trigger the sensor as well. So I recommend that you switch off the viewfinder sensor. Go to menu, wrench, tap three, display setting, Switch display control to manual. You might be thinking, hang on, wait, what if I want to use the viewfinder, Adam? How then? <laughs> well, my friend, this will lead to the next bonus setting. Did you know on a Canon M50, you can customize the physical buttons to do other things? Go to menu, wrench, tap five, custom functions, page three. You can choose whichever button you want, but for me personally, I customize the flash button to toggle the viewfinder. And because the Canon M50 battery is notoriously bad, I customized the trash button to easily switch it on and off and save some battery too. Now with these settings in place, I have way more control over the camera. You're welcome. Now, while these settings will improve how your video would look, if your audio sounds bad, no one will stick around to watch. So check out this video to know more about the best audio settings for the Canon M50.